Okay, I'm going to give you a little update here. Uh, if you notice, the variac is gone. Um, the reason is I've finally got the ohmage for the trigger calculated out to operate. And basically, it's 120 volts, but because it's hitting the cap, uh, it's uh, sitting at 161 volts. That is my start voltage. Um, as it goes through the bridge rectifier so that's the starting voltage now as opposed to using the variac to get up to speed I'm going to start it for you here and show you but basically variac has gone the calculations done and I'm about to add a few more coils to sustain the, the force I need to drive the induction generator to 120 volts continuous. Uh, if you've seen the last video, you know that the induction generator was about 50 or 60 volts continuous. Well, now that I've dropped the resistance on the trigger, nine coils is really not enough to even sustain the 50 volts I was getting. Um, so I'm adding a few more coils to resolve that issue. So, basically, um, I've got to add more coils if I want to sustain that torque I need to drive the induction generator. But, the benefit of that is now the amperage is considerably lower. So, my, amp my draw amperage is about 2 or 3 amps at full speed. Now, that will go up when I start adding coils. But, at 2 amps here... I'm getting almost 20 amps on the battery. So 120 here at 2 or 3 amps and about 20 amps at 12 volts into the battery bank. So go figure. Alright, let's start her up here. So you see it's a lot lower. It was getting to five or six amps before, and I was pushing on the output of the 12 volt system. That was putting almost 40 amps into the battery. Now that's great, except I'm drawing up five amps on my input. So currently, that's unacceptable. I'm, I'm trying to keep this number low as I can by adding more coils I'll get more torque and this number will climb slightly but I want this number to be around three or four amps because I plan on driving this with an inverter and the inverter I have is only rated at 4.5 amps so this number can't go above 4.5 amps for this to work because that has to use to drive it until the induction generator kicks in to take over for the inverter. So we want the induction generator to start pumping the caps up and then use the caps to drive the, the pulse motor. So now optimally what I'd want here is some type of rotoverter circuit to spin this motor to get the wheel up to speed and then kick that off and that would be your starter so you'd be able to use the AC motor the, AC, the induction generator as a motor to start the wheel moving and when it gets up to speed you just switch it over and turn it into a generator so you have a starter built in by using an induction generator at your core. So, so now that's 152 at 2.84 amps. And you can see uh, that's 790, say 800 RPM. Now right now the way it's wired, the induction generator kicks in about 850. So um, it is uh, still needs some tuning, and I think I need to add a few more capacitors 
because it's still pretty abrupt when it kicks in. So if you watch here, this number will start going a little crazy, and then it'll it'll jump up to 130 volts. But because I don't have enough, because I change the resistance, now these all these coils are slightly weaker than they were before. So I have to add more. It's about ready to do it. You can see it start to go nuts here. Here it goes. So 130 volts. This drops down because, like I said, these coils now with the higher resistance on the trigger of 4.7 kilo ohms are not sufficient to drive the wheel. It drops back down. But I hope to add a few more coils and correct that problem while keeping this amperage under 4.5 amps. Now, it would probably be easier to to use a different inverter, a pure sine wave inverter, would probably solve that problem. But you work with what you got. So basically, that's where it's at at this moment. So I'm going to try to do more videos as much as I can. So you got to bear with me here. I'm trying to do a lot of experiments. I'm trying to get this thing to work. You guys are going to see it all. I'm not holding back anything. This is open source. Everything is being shown to you as it's being done. So um, there is no secret to this. This is a common sense approach using a pulse motor to drive an induction generator. Okay, 18, 18 amps. into the charge batteries and 2.6 amps at 152 volts which is actually 120 volts so 2.73 amps into the pulse motor and 18.5 Battery bank is sitting at 13.42.